There are times when, despite our good intentions, what we do causes far more harm than the initial problem. We begin in Ackworth, Iowa on the afternoon of May 12, 1994, when a young brother and sister went next door to play with a friend on his family's farm. Around 6.20 p.m., Stephen Montalbano returned home from work. I live on a farm. I've got horses, cows, cats, chickens, ducks. We've been having a lot of trouble with dogs killing our chickens and ducks. The last people that live next door, their dog killed 15 or 20 chickens. <laughs> I just assumed the worst again. I was shooting behind the dog. I wasn't trying to kill the dog, I was trying to scare it off. When we continued, I couldn't believe it was happening. It was just a nightmare unfolding right in front of my face, but it was real. When a man trying to scare away a dog shot his rifle into a shed, he did not know his stepson, Andy Neal, had been playing there with friends. Judy! I was scared when the bullets came because I thought I was the one who was going to get hit. My son came out of the A-frame screaming. I was just in a panic. I, I thought I'd shot my own, my, my boy. Eight-year-old Jeannie had been playing in the shed with her nine-year-old brother, Andrew. My sister fell, screaming. I felt bad because there's bullet holes in her that had blood coming out. I was going to go run for help. And instead, I, sh I remembered something from a show to help people stop bleeding. And so I took off my shirt and put it on the hole that was bleeding closer to her chest. I loved my sister and I didn't want to see her die. Stephen's wife Barbara had been next door at the neighbors. And I heard gunshots. I was just terrified. And then I heard my son Andy scream that Jeannie had been shot. Go get your mom. Go get your mom. I'm sorry. I couldn't believe it was happening. It was just a nightmare unfolding right in front of my face. But it was real. She was shot. This is gonna hurt. She said, I'm gonna die. And I said, no, you're not gonna die. Everything's gonna be okay. And then I saw that she was shot in the side of her chest. All I could think of was they killed a kid. You're not I felt guilty. I felt ashamed. It's really hard to look at a little girl that's been shot, especially if you, you're the one responsible for shooting her. Uh, it's real painful. It just seemed impossible that something like this could happen. Your mommy's coming, huh? Here's this little bitty girl. She's so sweet and so, so frail. You're not going to die, honey. The second bullet had gone into her back. My biggest fear was that it was in her spine. I couldn't think of a more horrible thing for a little girl than to be paralyzed for the rest of her life. Jeannie's mother, Emma Jean McAllister, rushed over as soon as she heard what had happened. To see that bullet hole there was really an obscenity. A violation of, of a very sweet child. And very frightening because there was no exit wound. 911 emergency. Yes, um, we just made a call for an ambulance. Yes. Okay, we've got rescue en route. But um, we're so far out that maybe an air flight would be better. Okay, well, we'll check on that. Also, uh, who was on the other end of the gun? Who shot who? Was shot? I was. Okay, you're the one that shot her? Yes, it was, this is an accident. <laughs> 
Warren County Sheriff's Deputy Gene Coon arrived within 11 minutes. When I saw the wound in the chest, my concerns grew. A 22 rifle shell can ricochet off bone. Stay with me, Jeannie. There's a very strong possibility that the lung was injured or uh, the heart was involved and that she could possibly die. I did not let myself think about her dying, but in my heart, I was scared to death. I was afraid that she would be taken. A Pleasantville volunteer medic unit arrived, led by EMT Chad Bennett. First thing that's going through my mind, you kind of wonder why. What happened, you know? A child that young doesn't deserve to be shot. Okay. It just tore my heart out. I would have traded places with her in a second, in a heartbeat, because she was so scared. I've never seen her so scared. Here it is. I don't want to look at it. Okay. I don't want to see it. Just take it. It was very distressing. It was so needless. Just a reckless, impulsive act, and a little girl was shot. People should think before they shoot. There were three children that could have died that day, and he'll have to live with that for the rest of his life. Eight-year-old Jeannie McAllister was transferred to an Air Life helicopter and taken to Mercy Hospital Medical Center, where she was examined by trauma surgeon Richard Toon. What's her last vital signs? Blood pressure, please. 102. We did not know whether she could die at any time. We have to treat every patient that way when they arrive in the trauma room. Check for Ready for one, two, two three. three. Nice deep breath. Okay, there are no exit wounds here. Okay, the bullet's in here. We'll need an x-ray of the chest right away. These are the x-rays in your daughter that show the bullet that's left in her body. You'll see that right here, the bullet is just over the spine in the back. The x-rays show that the bullet had missed the spine by just a quarter of an inch. If it had been a quarter of an inch to the right, it would have severed her spine and she would have been paralyzed for life. It hadn't hit any major veins or arteries. There was no major nerve damage, which was amazing. I felt relieved enough to sit down and just cry then because if I could see the bullet away from her spine, her spine was fine. Now, as she's running and playing in a playground and falls down. Because the bullet in the leg was so accessible, we very quickly took the bullet out with just a single stitch. The bullet near her spine would cause more damage to take it out than to leave it in. Jeannie was very heavily sedated, but she tightened her grip on my hand, and she stirred and said, Mommy, which was the most beautiful sound in the whole world. During Jeannie's recovery, Stephen went to visit her at the hospital. Hey, honey. How you doing, huh? I'm very, very, very sorry that I shot you. I forgive Steve because... It was an accident. He didn't do it on purpose. She's doing really well today. I don't hold animosity toward him. Steve was, I think, as emotionally shattered by all of this as Jeannie was physically shattered. <laughs> wow, look at his fin. A month has passed. Although Jeannie is still suffering back pain, she's expected to fully recover from her injuries. I thought that I was really going to die. If I had one thing to say about the people who saved my life, I would say thank you for saving my life. Every time you pick up a firearm, you're taking a risk of shooting yourself, shooting another person. You can drop a firearm, it can go off and kill you, and kill somebody across the street. You having fun, Jeannie? Uh -huh. Firearms are dangerous. I don't want to deal with maybe somebody else getting hurt. Dance with Jeannie. Is Danny there? Jeannie's family and ours have become friends. Instead of blame being put out, everyone pulled together and love was put out and support was put out. Jeannie, cowgirl of the West. And we've all pulled together to try and really help each other. Go get this girl. Next. Police department, open the door, please. Hello? Evening. Is your boyfriend here? Who's been...